simply means for you and I that no matter the complexity of the situation, if God advises us, if God gives us counsel, we're pretty certain that even if the road may seem rough, we know that the end is good. And your end shall be good in Jesus' mighty name. Let's quickly look at the book of Job chapter 29 verse 4. It says, just as I was in the days of my prime, when the friendly counsel of God was over my tent. Now, it wasn't just counsel. See, I just want to quickly highlight something. It wasn't just counsel. It was friendly counsel. Now, because um, I, I was thinking, I mean, from, from, from when we, we had service, I was really beginning to think. I've been thinking about this friendly counsel. And then it began to dawn on me that, um, actually, sorry, the principle of the inner circle. That's the title of this message, so you can write it down. The principle of the inner circle. All right? It began to dawn on me that counsel is in levels. Does that make sense? Counsel is in levels. Um, and the, the level of counsel that we have here is called friendly counsel. My, so the question then is, what is friendly counsel? And how does it matter for you and I, especially in this month of August? Um, relationships, and f um, when we talk about friendship, we're talking about relationship. And the reality is this, relationships are in levels. And that's really the core of what this is all about um, tonight. Um, relationships are in levels. So there are certain things that you will share with certain people in your life that you will not share with others. There are certain concerns you have. You have certain concerns. With some people, you will go to them and you will share them with them. When other people see you, you will smile like everything is all right. Do you get where I'm coming from? Now, even advice someone comes to you with one situation this is a reality and you will understand why you will give that person certain advice someone else comes you wouldn't give that person the same advice why relationship it really is relationship that that the lev the, the kind of relationship you have with an individual will determine how much you have access to from that individual, how much information you can glean or you can receive from them. If you, if you look at Jesus Christ, to really understand this principle, Jesus Christ, I mean, we had the 7,000. You know the story where he fed the 7,000, right? He also fed the 5,000, right? So there's, so there's 7,000, there's 5,000. And then we hear about the 120. We hear about the 70, right? We hear about the twelve. We hear about the three, and then we hear about the one, right? At one stage, you know, initially he had the 12. When he was going to go and pray that dangerous prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, only three were with him, right? Now, when he was on the cross, two ran away. Only one was with him. Do you get where I'm coming from? There's a different level of relationship, it's a different level of relationship. Um, Moses is another example. The Bible says that in the book of Psalm 103, verse 7, that God showed his ways to Moses. God showed his ways to Moses. So what does that mean? And then his acts to the children of Israel. I'd liken that to a recipe and then the meal. The children of Israel had access to the meal, but they had no clue how to prepare it. They had a relationship with God, but they were not in God's inner circle. So because they had a relationship, they were fed. But Moses, God gave him the recipe. He gave him the secret recipe with which to prepare. What that simply means is Moses, with the recipe, could always replicate that experience. Does that make sense? 
So we see that when we, the, the benefits, we're beginning to see the benefits of being in God's inner circle is you're not, it, you, don't, you don't just live by, by the occasional miracle. It simply means we have access to the secrets of God. And so pretty much we can't be stranded. Isn't that exciting? Now, let's look at the book of John chapter 15. In verse 15, and let's see something that Jesus Christ said here. Because this was Jesus talking to his disciples. I just want to first get us to understand this principle of the inner circle, to understand this thing is real. And then we would then get to see how to access it. Jesus was talking to his disciples, says, no longer do I call you servants, which means he used to call them servants. I need us to get this. He says, no longer do I call you servants, which means that there was a time he called them servants. There was a time that was how he related with them. There was a time their relationship was on a servant to master relationship. And because of that, there were certain things they were not privy to. There were certain benefits of his presence they didn't have access to. Does that make sense? He then says, a servant does not know what his master is doing. They can enjoy the benefits, but they're still clueless. They can be in church... They can be in church, and, they can, and then the grace that is upon the church, they could experience it, but they can't, they can't produce it. Does that make sense? So beyond the corporate covering and the corporate blessing within church, with the experience, because they're a part of church, they can't, they can't replicate certain things consistently in their own lives because there, there is the corporate and then there is the corporate blessing, and there's the blessing of the inner circle. Praise the Lord. Jesus says, a servant doesn't know what his master is doing, even though he eats in the master's house. But I, now I call you friends. So he's saying, now you have qualified for a different level of relationship with me. For all the things I heard from my father, I've made known to you. Praise the Lord. So what Jesus is saying to me and what Jesus is saying to you is if we qualify by being in his inner circle, then he will make known certain things to us that we don't know right now. Praise the Lord. Which means there are still lots of things he wants to share with us, but we need to qualify. We need to be in his inner circle to have access to these things. How many people here would like to be in Jesus' inner circle? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's quickly look at the book of Matthew chapter 13, and we'll see a, a demonstration of this, how Jesus demonstrated this. Matthew chapter 13, and let's first look at verses 10 and 11. So let's look at verse 10. So the, Bible's, the disciples came to Jesus. The disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? Like, why do you speak to them in coded language? So Jesus had spoken to the multitude. These were pe Jesus' followers. This, the multitude were Jesus' followers. Do you get where I'm coming from? They were members of church. They were church members. He says, why do you preach to them? That's another way of saying it. Why do you preach to them? Praise the Lord. Let me decode it. So when he says, why do you speak to them in parables? Why do you preach to them? Praise the Lord. He says, he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them it has not been given. Whew, think about this. These people came all the way to come and sit down and listen to Jesus. Some of them traveled far to come and sit down and listen to him. And Jesus is saying, to you, you will know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them, they, it has not been given to them, even though they sat down in service and they sat through the message. Which means there is more to this than sitting in service and sitting through the message. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at um, the 18th verse there. Verse 18, same chapter. It says, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. Let's continue. Then anyone who hears this word of mine and does not understand the, the kingdom what of the kingdom and does not understand, then the wicked one comes and snatches it. This was basically where Jesus began to break it down to those in his inner circle. Does this make sense? So the benefit of being in Jesus' inner circle is 
others would receive a preaching. Others would receive a That's pretty much when they come, they get a preaching. Right? They get a sermon. But we receive the secrets. When you're in his inner circle, you receive the secrets. He opens it up to you. A sermon is coded. A ser- the truth is a sermon is coded. Think about it and I'll explain to you. Right? There's all of you here. I'm giving a general message. You still have to decode it for your own personal, unique situation. It's very, very different to if we were having a one-to-one convert. Very, very different. Very, very different. So here, I'm, I kind of need to get the message across, but I'm going to have to present it in a way that, because I've got, now Jesus had thousands. So he would have had to look for certain examples and certain situations to try to communicate it. Um, and it's, in, in a sense, he would simplify it, but it ends up being even, you know, that's just the way it is. It's very different to sitting one-to-one. Do you get where I'm coming from? And then having it broken down for you, for your particular situation, so you can apply it. In essence, you receive the step-by-step recipe of how to implement it for your own situation, with your own unique oven, with your own unique measurements. Imagine, each, you get where I'm coming from. This is the benefit of being in the inner circle. This was the benefit the disciples had that the multitude didn't have. After the preaching, they had the benefit of having it opened up to them properly. So, question now. Do you think the people, the 5,000 who heard that message, and the disciples, do you think they would all implement and get similar results? No, they won't. That's just fact. However sincere they are, there is something the insiders have that they don't have. Praise the Lord. Another example, very quickly, was Abraham. Abraham, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 8, um, Abraham was called God's friend. Abraham was called God's friend. This is a month of friendship. It says, but you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I've chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. So, when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and it was his prerogative to do that. And he was literally going and says, you know what? Hold on. I need you to understand this. There's my, let me just use language. My mate, my buddy Abraham. I can't go do this and not let him know. It just won't be right. There was a um, few years ago, we're going to have a recession in this country. And God said, you know what? This thing is going to happen. I've got to speak to my son, Eddie, so that he can prepare the members of Gateway Chapel so that they can be prepared for the wind that is about to blow. Do you get? That's called inner circle access. Praise the Lord. So there was going to be an experience. The only person that knew was the person who was in God's inner circle. The outsiders didn't know. Praise the Lord. How many of you would like to receive insight about things that are going to happen that would affect your community before it happens? I know I would. Praise the Lord. And the key to that is to be a friend of God. The key to that is to have a desire to be in his inner circle. When you're in God's inner circle, he gives you insight into divine health. He gives you insight into divine wealth because he shares those insights with those in his inner circle. He gives you insight into divine career success. He gives you insight into divine family success. He gives you insight into divine marital success. He, why? Because the secrets are with him. 
Praise the Lord. But then the truth is, the secrets are not available to everybody. Praise the Lord. In fact, let me put it to you this way. The secrets are not available to everybody in church. Let me just put it that way, because then you'll get it. Now, the grace of God, the blessings of God, are available to everybody. Praise the Lord. The secrets, they come at a price. Praise Jesus. The secrets, they come at a price. And he says to us in James chapter 4, verse 8, he says, draw near to God. That's the price. The price we have to pay is to move from the outer circle and move inside. So we need to move near. He says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Right? Draw near to God and he will do what? Draw near to God and he will do what? So what do we do if we want to access God's inner circle? We need to draw near to him. So this is the month of his counsel, and it's the month of friendship, but there is a price to pay, and the price to pay is the price of drawing near. When you're in the inner circle, you have access to the secrets. Let me share, I'm, I'm going to share this with you. Um, I run a, I run a and, and, and I'm just, and I'm going to use this and, and just juxtapose it um, with God's inner circle so you can really understand this. I run a, I run a, a community of about 5,000 coaches um, who I'm basically just helping them to build a business. Now, the reality is um, I also have an inner circle of about 20 coaches, right? And those 20 coaches who are in my inner circle, they pay a price to be in my inner circle. Well, this one is a financial price, among other things, but the good thing is God is not demanding money from you and I. Praise the Lord. Now, I spend about 50% of my time in my business with those 20 people and the rest of the 50% of my time with the 5,000. Are you with me? Not only that, there are things that I'm sharing with the people in my inner circle now because you don't cast pearls before swine. No disrespect. I, there's things which I'm sharing with them, insights which I'm sharing with them, which I'm not sharing with the others. They don't value me. They don't value what I have. They don't honor me. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just saying this so you can understand how God relates with us. They're all in my community. If you say, oh, yeah, DJ, he's nice. Yeah, they, they would say that. However, the reality is they've not spent a penny with me. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying it. They've not spent a penny with me. So financially, they're not committed. Do you get where I'm coming from? If you believe in me this much, seven pounds you didn't spend. You're laughing. Okay. What is true? Seven pounds you didn't spend. And yet, you, now, I don't see the commitment. I don't see it. And then some other people are spending 300 pounds a month. I'm going to commit to those people. I'm going to show up for them. Praise the Lord. Now, the same way people pay the price, God also expects us to pay a price. So what I'm going to share with us um, seven ways we pay the price to access his inner circle. The first one is simple. We need, and this is foundational. We need, and this is, we need to have faith. First of all, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And you're thinking, why are you saying we need to have faith? We're in church. I'll explain in a moment. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. If you can open up. It says, so, but without faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, let me just explain right now. We talk about the inner circle, which means that there are outer circles, 
right? And as we go in, the, the numbers get smaller. In God's house, the biggest number of people are unbelieving believers. Now, those ones don't even get anything. They're the ones who never have a testimony. They're the ones who know other people. It, it just never happens for them. And they're the majority. Because they don't believe that God exists. They kind of wish he exists, but they don't believe he exists. I hope you get what I'm saying. They don't. They have doubts. But they were brought up or groomed in a certain way, so they're still showing up, you know, just in case he exists. Hope me, I can just get something. But also, not just that. Also, they don't believe that he rewards you if you consistently, diligently seek him. And this is really important because, and I'll explain why this is the very first step to the inner circle. Because it's hard work. And if you don't believe, you will not do the work. The thing that will make you do that work is because you believe when I get there, I will experience it. So you're doing the work and you're going through, you're not experiencing the things yet, but you keep on doing it because you believe it is there. The moment you start to doubt, you will stop. Praise the Lord. So the first thing you and I need to do is we need to ask ourselves, the Bible says we should examine ourselves whether we still are in the faith. And this is really important. And this is, now, it doesn't matter how long I've been in church. I need to ask myself consistently, DJ, do you still believe? Just in case I have now become an unbelieving believer and I didn't notice. And now, you know, there's, there, there's a form of godliness, but deep down inside, I'm denying the power. Is this making sense? So the very first step here. Because you need to trust God, and you need faith to trust God. Praise the Lord. So the thing that you and I need to accept, first of all, is that if God's word says it, that is it. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what my circumstances. It doesn't matter, you know, what other people say. As long as I see it in the book, I choose to believe that in spite of the fact that it doesn't make sense to me. The one thing I said is God's wisdom is past finding out. We need to accept certain things that some things will make sense to, to us from scripture. Some won't. Because his, wis his wisdom is beyond our, we can't understand it. So look at the ones you understand, and that's cool. The ones you don't understand, just trust him. And that is a commitment we need to make to access his inner circle. Because without trust, we don't get close. We can't please him if we don't trust him. So the first, it's, it's first ch choosing, this is it. I don't care if it makes sense to me a lot or not. If he said it, that's it. You know, and if I perish, I perish. And that's the first step. And this, this is where you step from being an unbelieving believer to at least now you receive something from him. Because the unbelieving believer said, the Bible said, let him not think he will receive anything. Praise the Lord. So you've always got to ask yourself, I've always got to ask myself, do I still believe? And if you don't, then go back to the word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. What usually happens that makes us to stop believing is we begin to hear other voices. And even the truth is, even if you don't want to hear them, they're there. They're on television. On things as innocent as the news, they're there. In your meetings at work, they're there. You know, with the lunch with your colleagues, they're there. You know, they're, they're pre on the train, they're there. So what happens is, if you're not consistently putting the word of God in your mind, and then you're exposed to the other stuff that's going into your mind, you start to believe that stuff, and you stop believing the word. And then you, stop, you move from being inside to stepping outside. And then all of a sudden, you're no longer receiving anything from the Lord. But that won't be your testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's move on quickly. The second thing is a strong desire to learn from God. And this is crucial.
a strong desire to learn from God. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. It says, it's the glory of God to hide something. Listen, you don't cast pearls before swine, Scripture says. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. And it's the glory of kings is to search out a matter. The reality is this, right? You and I, to be able to access his inner circle, one of the things we need to do is we need to show to him that we desire to learn from him. And not only that, that we are committed to unlearning the things that we had learned before that are contrary to his way. You can't say you want to be in in my inner circle, and then, and again, I'm just using my, like I said, I'll use my business to, 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 to juxtapose this, and then there's a strategy that we're implementing, and then you're going to bring one strategy from elsewhere and say, well, there's this... Go to his inner circle if you want to use that approach. Here, this is what we use. Do you get where I'm coming from? If you're going to be in the kingdom, then learn. Be, you know, I'm going to be here. I want to be in his inner circle. I want to learn his way. I want to learn his way. There must be a strong desire. You know, what is his way to success? What is his way to raising children? What is his way? In any situation, the question is, what is his way to Whatever that thing is. There's the desire to want to know God's way. So you've, um, two things we do here, right? A hunger to search scriptures to find out how to do things. And, and also showing up in church to find out how to live as a Christian. And playing the messages back. And then also we pray. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you don't know yet. So we seek to know his way, how God's way to this, God's way to that, right? And be willing to, and this is it, be willing to unlearn the ways we had learned before. The way it works in his inner circle is this. In anybody's inner circle, especially in Jehovah's inner circle, you can't come to him and say you want to do it your own way. If you want to do it your own way, it's fine, but just don't come close. It's just, I'm just saying it the way it is, right? If you want to get close, you've got to, you've got to align with how he wants things done. You've got to learn how things are done in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. A strong desire to learn from God is hugely essential. So this month, In the area where you're expecting or desire the counsel of God, search the scripture. I want write it down that thing to learn God's way to whatever that thing is. Right? His ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. So God's way to whatever that thing is where you you have a blockage, where things aren't going the way you want, the way you want them to go, right? Say, this month, I am going to discover God's way to whatever that thing is. And then make that your mission in the month of August. And then what do you do? I'm not going to go into, but things you can do, search scripture. Number two, seek, seek counsel. Um, Pastor, minister, how do you do, 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 do? Ask the questions, right? And then pray. Do you get where I'm coming from? Search through scriptures, seek counsel of your pastors, seek counsel of ministers, and then pray to Jehovah. And let the Holy Spirit minister, minister to you. Praise the Lord. Number three, very quickly. The, the second one is a strong desire to learn from God. Number three is a strong desire to know God. A strong, it's one thing to learn from me. It's another thing to know me. Do, do you get what I'm coming from? Learn from me is you're seeking, you're seeking to get something from me, right? And that's fine, you know. There's some people who come and ask me a lot of questions. People who, you know, they, they, they go, they download my, you know, they go and watch my videos. And they're looking to learn from me. But then there are people who actually want to just, let's, let's just do a meal together. They actually want to know me. It's kind of different. They want to build a relationship. And they're two different things. 
The truth is you don't need to know a person um, to be able to learn from them. But it just means that we're moving, you know, like I said, faith, we're getting closer. And then you're learning from God, getting closer to the inner circle. And now getting to know him, we're moving even closer. So we're looking at relationship. Daniel 11.32 says, those who do know their God, they're the ones who will be strong and do exploits. Those who do know him, those who have a level of intimacy, those who have a relationship with Jehovah, they are the ones who, 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 who will experience the power of God in their lives. So things like what pleases him? What pleases him? What upsets him? Do you know? All right. Some people, they've learned from me, but they don't know what upsets me. My wife knows what upsets me. My children know what upsets me. They also know what pleases me. You know, my children are very good at that. You know, and they want something, they do something to please me. And even though I know that that's what they're doing, it still works. Do you get where I'm coming from? Why? Because they know me. They have a relationship with me. So what pleases him? What doesn't he like? How does he like things to be done? So now you're searching through scripture, not for what you're going to get out of it, but you're looking to know this one. You're looking, so when you're reading, you're looking to really get to know how he thinks, you know, how he relates, looking at how he's related with other people, the people that he said pleased him. What did they do that pleased him? You know, and you're really just looking to, I just want to know. And then when you're praying, Lord, you know, I mean, Paul, that I may know you. Let me experience you in a way I haven't before. Just want to know you. You pray that prayer, then you start searching through scriptures. The Holy Spirit just starts showing God to you. The Holy Spirit starts showing him to you. And that really, that then, you see, and again, what happens is, as you're moving closer to the inner circle, you're being transformed. Do you get that? You're being transformed. Now, you don't try, you see, many of us try to be transformed. Mm -mm. Just focus on moving closer. And as you're moving closer, what happens is his glory, because you're getting closer to his glory, is transforming you. Right? So as you move closer, what happens is you're seeing more of him. And as you're seeing more of him, he's reflecting on you. And so you're beginning to be transformed. Praise Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 29. Let's quickly look at that. Verses, verse 12, Jeremiah 29, verse 12. It says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Mm -hmm. Next verse. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. With all your heart. So there is a strong desire to know God. With all your heart. I want to know him. Right? It's, it's, you know, like when you're dating and you're asking a gazillion questions, you just want, you know, things that, is, is that important? Well, I just want to know, you know, just, well, you know, I just, you just want to know, you know, you just want to know. It's not a big deal, but you just want to know. You just want to know. I just want to discover as much as I can about you because I want to relate with you. And it's the same thing. It's the same way. He wants us to know him. And if we seek him, he says, we will find him. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So a strong desire to know God. And the next one is a strong desire to please God. You want to get into... God's inner circle. So it's one thing you're not getting to know him. You know what pleases him, what, does, what he doesn't like. It's now that you know. If you do the things he doesn't like, he will push you further out. It's just the way it works. Now this is the kind of cold thing we kind of don't, but it's just true. All right? 
some people who are in my inner circle, there was one particular person. I remember I went to see pastor. I was like, pastor, I said, this person is stressing me. He was in my group. And he was doing a lot of good things, but there was one thing he was doing. It was just, he was upset. It was stressing me. And I was like, I might need to kick this guy out. I might need to kick him out because it was just giving me too much stress. And I, you know, was, was, when I'm kind of, I went to the pastor, I said, this guy is in my group, and the guy is really, this, 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 this. I said, it's really stressing me. It's wearing me out. I don't know what to do. I said, see, see what he's doing. I showed pastor, see what he's doing. You know, it was just getting to me. And that's me. God, the Bible says God wouldn't behold. Okay, John chapter 14. Let's just see the John 14, 15. Let's see what Jesus Christ says to us so we can get this. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me. Did he say, if you love me, sing that you love me? Did he say that? Don't get me wrong. He likes it when you sing. But he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Let's look at verse 21. It says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I would love him and manifest myself to him. Next verse, please. Judas Iscariot said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Can you see that? Which means that, hey, again, inner circle will have access that others won't have. Next verse. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. If anyone loves me, what would he do? Keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Is that in a circle? Yeah. So he's saying that if you want to have access to the inner circle, right, and you say you love me, so you want to be intimate with me, well, if you love me, do what pleases me, and then I'll come and hang out with you, and I will manifest my presence. You know, you, you saw previous, he says, he says I'll, let's just go back up two verses. The next, the previous, no, sorry, let's go 21. He says, I will love him and manifest myself to him, and I want to highlight the word manifest because God is omnipresent. But he only manifests his presence. Now, manifestation of his presence simply means his presence produces something that we see. Right? When we obey and keep his commandments, that's when his presence produces a result in our life. Hallelujah. So a strong desire to please God. Then the fifth thing, so again, we're moving closer. Are we moving closer right now to his inner circle? And we're being transformed from glory to glory. Number five, a desire to excel through God. And this is crucial. Many of us are too selfish. And we call it modesty. It's not modesty. It's selfishness. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. You know what? I just want to live a simple, easy life. Just, you know, buy my house, buy my car, look at my children, sort them out, they go to university, and I'm fine. And you know what? I don't want too much. I don't want to live a life of excess, really. Is that what God said? So God is going to give you all his access to him so you can live for yourself and for your own belly. Praise the Lord. God is looking for people who will shine for him. And when you make a commitment to excel for him, not excel for yourself, but to excel in a way that people will be like, you know, the Bible says, in the last days, the mountains of the Lord shall be established on top of all mountains. All nations shall flow into it. And people will come and say, come, take us to the house of this, your God. There's something about your life that is excellent, that we just want to have a bit of it. So whatever you have, we want some. That's you and I. But the thing is, we need to, because we want God to bless us. Why? For yourself? So there is a commitment, and there is a commitment, a desire to excel 
to excel through God, like Daniel and his three friends, like Joseph, to stand out as a light and then point people to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Psalm 53, verse 27, the Bible says that the Lord delights in the prosperity of his servants. He wants you to prosper because when you prosper, when I'm saying prosper, I'm not just talking about financial prosperity, even though that is a part of it. Prosper means to do well, right? Prosper does not mean have money. It means to do well, right? So he wants you to do well. So that when you do well, you stand out. And when you stand out, you are attractive. But you have to make a commitment that you want to stand out for him. Not just to sort yourself out. Praise the Lord. One of the things that gives me joy is when the people in my inner circle do well. It means that my work is not in vain. The very first time someone who was in my inner circle told me that she was quitting her job to build, I was excited. She, was, she, she had built a business, she said she was quitting. I was excited. I was very, and so I can understand what the Bible says. He delights in the prosperity of his, I understand it in my own little way. He wants you to do well. Because he proves to the world that there is a benefit to the sacrifices of coming into his inner circle. He wants you and I to let the world see that that price we pay has benefits. But if you don't desire to excel, you will settle for mediocrity. And God doesn't do mediocrity. He doesn't. So if you want to do mediocre, then you won't have access to the inner circle. The Bible says... In the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, he says, you don't, let's just look at it. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your lights shine. People see your good works and who do they glorify? Your Father in heaven. And that's why the Bible says you don't light a candle, and that's just a few verses up, and place it under a table. So you don't take what God has given you and have it in obscurity. He doesn't want that. And that's not modesty. That's selfishness. Praise the Lord. Okay. How many of us are going to excel for Christ? Praise the Lord. Stand out in whatever field. The next thing, number six, to access his inner circle, a passion for the kingdom. Crucial. And this is a huge one. You and I, this is a key thing. This really gets us to start coming into his inner circle now. Really. This is real big one. This is where real close now. This is where we move from. This is where, you know when you say, I give my life I give my life to Christ. People say, I give my life to Christ. You know that when you get born again, you don't give your life to Christ. No, you receive the life of Christ. Praise the Lord. The moment you lay down your life and you then say, my life is no longer mine, I'm living for you. That's when you give your life to Christ. And when you say you're living for him, that simply means your pri his priority has now become your priority. Does that? Now, most, you can't get into the inner circle if your priority is your belly. If your priority is your comfort. If your priority is your husband. If your priority is your children. If your priority is your wife. If your priority is your business. If your priority is your career. You can't access the inner circle until what is his priority becomes your priority. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are benefits, but you're, you're close to the inner circle, but you're not there. And Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, down. Let's just look at it, 31 to 33, very quickly. Matthew chapter 6, from the 31st verse. It says, therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? You see that there, saying, you know what? Stop focusing. Don't make your priority your 
comfort, your feeding, your accommodation. It says, for after all these things the Gentiles seek, those are the priorities of people who are not in his house. For your heavenly father, he knows you need these things. We kind of know this scripture. Certain scriptures, we've heard them so much, but we don't really hear them. He says, he knows you need them, but don't make them your priority. The next verse, says, but seek first. Make your number one priority the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all that stuff he will then add to you. And what that simply means in this context is, I am willing to sacrifice anything and everything for the kingdom. Does that make sense? And that's including my life. And this is really crucial to get to the place where he calls you friend and where he shares his secrets with you. Because now you become his partner. This is a different level. You now become a partner with God. At this point, he was, you were getting from him. Now you're with him to do his thing. And then when that happens, basically before you ask, you get that's where you get to that level. Before you ask, you get. And when we say the kingdom, really, it's two things. Bringing them in and nurturing them. That's what, you know, that's the kingdom work. That's it. Bringing them in and nurturing them. Discipleship. That's it. That's, that's, God's pro- that's why Jesus came. Jesus did not come so that you and I will have cars and houses. In fact, let me put it this way, you know. <clears throat> And I hope you understand this in the context I'm saying it. Jesus didn't come so that you and I will live long. Honestly, we will live long, but that's not why he came. Before he came, people were living long. He did not come so that we can have money. Before he came, people were having money. He didn't come so that we can be healthy. Before he came, there were people who were healthy. But there was one thing. The devil was taking people to hell. That's why he came. And people are still going to hell today. And that's his priority. The thing that is most important to God is bringing them out into into his house and grooming them so they can go and do the same thing. And looking after them so they can... That is what's most important to him. And when that becomes your priority, you become his partner and he sorts you. And that's when he reveals things to you that he doesn't reveal to others. When what's most important to him becomes our priority. Praise Jesus. And then number seven. An attitude that pleases God. Attitude is what determines atmosphere. And God doesn't do negative atmosphere. This one, I left it last because it's hugely important. And there are many good people who demonstrate a bad attitude. And when I talk about a bad attitude as far as God is concerned few things it's moaning whinging and complaining God doesn't do that even if you have a reason to even if you feel you can justify it God doesn't do that that's why in the book of Psalms chapter 100 it says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name praise the Lord now we even if we have problems we bring our problems to him with a positive attitude. It's really crucial. You have a problem, and you, you're genuinely going through a problem. We go through, he knows we go through problems. It's the attitude he can't stand. Praise the Lord. He understands you feeling low, right? He understands you feeling sad, but it is the complaining, the whinging, and the moaning that he can't stand. He, he just, it's, again, we talk about atmosphere. Um, you, you, for example, pastor says, you know what? When I'm teaching, I don't like movement. And he's particular about it. 
Why? Because it's disruptive for him. So he's particular about the right atmosphere for him to do what God wants him to do. The same thing, God is particular about his atmosphere. He doesn't do negativity. So if you're feeling low and then you complain, he won't hear you. Because he's not there. It's just the way it is. If you're feeling low and you come in with an attitude of praise, your heart is heavy, but you're still praising. Right? You're still praising. Right? Why? Because you understand that in his inner circle, there's no negativity. And this is one that a lot of people struggle with because we let our emotions get in the way of our worship. You can't worship and complain at the same time. And you have to worship in his presence. Praise Jesus. So when we demonstrate and exhibit all of this, then we can then say, like Job, let's bring it up again. Job chapter 29 and verse 4. As we begin to, when I went out to the gate by the city, no, just as I was in the day of my prime, when the friendly counsel of God was over my house. That will be your testimony. That will be my testimony this month in the mighty name of Jesus. As we move closer to him, as we draw into his inner circle, then we'll begin to receive the counsel of God that will bring a transformation in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord.